So uh, my name is Eliana Fmani and I'm from uh, Facebook AI Research in Tel Aviv University. Today I'm going to talk about diffusion models. Um, okay, so uh, this is the, the table of context to the, to the presentation. Uh, the first part is about uh, introduction. I will talk about uh, the nosing diffusion probabilistic models, the DDPA models. I will give a very short introduction. And then I will uh, review some current results, some uh, uh, papers that publish uh, very lastly. Uh, the second part will be about our work that is about the noising diffusion gamma model. Basically, I will show how we can convert the, the original diffusion models that use Gaussian noise into a gamma distribution noise. And the last part uh, will be about noise estimation for DDPM. Basically, this is another paper that we published. Uh, that show how we can accelerate the inference time of uh, diffusion models. Uh, okay, also please free to, to ask any question during the presentation. Okay, so this is the timeline of uh, the, the major article that published uh, of a uh, diffusion process. Uh, the first paper that introduced the diffusion process published seven years ago at ICML. It's called Deep and Supervised uh, Learning Using non equilibrium Thermodynamics uh, by Saul Dickstein from uh, Google Research. And then uh, five years, uh, basically no one did any research on the, the stuff. Um, and uh, at the uh, New RIPS uh, in 2020, Jonathan Hu from Google Research published the paper Genosing Diffusion Probabilistic Model that shows that uh, the diffusion models can uh, get a very good result with a lower number of iteration. And, and then at the same year, uh, two, uh, two big uh, contribution came. The first one was uh, the denoising diffusion implicit models that showed that uh, they can further accelerate the inference time for image generation. And the second one was two papers that uh, the first one called WaveGuard and the second one uh, DiffWave. The first one is uh, from Google research and the second one is from NVIDIA research that show that basically we can uh, synthesize a speech with the uh, diffusion models and get state-of-the-art results. Um, also last year, two major papers were published. The first one is Diffusion uh, Models Beats GAN on image synthesis uh, by OpenAI that show first, uh, this is, was the first paper that showed that diffusion models can get uh, state-of-the-art result on image generation. Um, the second paper was uh, again by Jonathan Hu from Google Research uh, that called Cascade Diffusion Models for High Fidelity Image Generation. Basically, further improved the previous result of uh, diffusion bits GAN methods on image synthesis. And uh, this is two papers that uh, we publish in our lab, uh, but I will also talk in uh, uh, this presentation. Okay, so what is diffusion uh, models? Um, we can um, we can regard this as a class of generative models like uh, energy-based model or variational lock encoders or GANs. Uh, basically, we the diffusion models take uh, some denoising auto encoders and convert it into generative models. Uh, we can also regard this as a generalized type of uh, autoregressive models. Uh, we can also look about it as uh, deep hierarchical variational auto encoders, and there are also other uh, interpretations. Okay, so uh, this is diffusion uh, model. Basically, this is a Markov chain. Uh, we get uh, from X0 to XT, this is the state. Each state basically is some image. We start for, from a clean image and uh, we finish with a noisy image, a completely image, uh, a noisy image. Basically, we have two processes. Uh, the first one is the forward process and the second one is the reverse process. In the forward process, basically, we take the clean image and add Gaussian noise at each step until we get a completely noise. And in the reverse process, we take a completely noise and convert it into image. Um, during the training, basically, we, we, we learn the forward process. Basically, we learn how to corrupt the data. We take the clean image and corrupt it into some noisy image. And uh, at the inference, uh, we get uh, the reverse process. Uh, that basically take uh, uh, some noise, some Gaussian noise, and convert it into image. Okay, so uh, the forward process basically gradually add the uh, noise uh, to the state x0 until it became uh, 
in completely noise. Basically, the uh, marginal distribution, qxt given xt minus 1, is the Gaussian distribution that uh, the mean value is uh, is depend on the previous state, xt minus 1, multiply by some uh, a constant term that uh, um, using with the hyperparameter beta t. The overall prob probability distribution, qx uh, x1 to big T is basically the multiplication of all over the previous uh, uh, probability functions. And uh, as I say, beta 1 uh, to beta T are the noise schedule and they are uh, hyperparameters. Uh, in order to train the uh, diffusion models, uh, we want to maximize the variational lower bound uh, or uh, to minimize the cost entropy loss. So uh, basically, we want to uh, to get this term, the, the cost entropy loss, and, and uh, minimize it, which is also bounded by this term. And uh, this term, if we can uh, look, we can see that we have uh, the log of um, the reverse process divided by the forward process. And uh, since we have log, uh, log here, so basically, uh, if you want to minimize this term, we want that uh, the, the, the reverse process will be equal to the reverse process. Um, and then basically, this is what we did, in, what we do in the training. Basically, we want that uh, the reverse process uh, will be equal to the uh, forward process. Um, so in the paper, um, detect the variation at lower bound and uh, show that it, uh, it has uh, three terms, LT, LT minus one and L zero. Basically, the most important part is the LT minus one, which is uh, the KL divergence between uh, the reverse process and the forward process. Um, basically, this term remove the noise from uh, the state XT into a cleaner uh, into a cleaner state XT minus one. Uh, the term L big T basically destroyed the data, and it doesn't have uh, any learnable parameters, so we don't optimize it. And also L0 uh, term, uh, basically uh, it doesn't important and uh, we don't optimize it. Most of the paper don't optimize it. Uh, regarding the training, uh, we use uh, SGD on uh, the term LT minus one. And um, since we want to accelerate the training process, so we have um, uh, the closed form uh, formula, basically this formula that uh, take us from state X0 to XT with just one step, um, I will explain it. So basically, uh, if you want to jump for, from state X0 to XT, we don't need um, to take X0 and uh, move it uh, in uh, all of the state between X0 to XT. We just, we can use the close form and jump from X0 to XT. Okay. Um, so, uh, the paper also asks how we can uh, parameterize the reverse process, uh, the process that basically generate uh, uh, the clean image from uh, the noisy, uh, the noise image. So the idea was to use uh, uh, the noise encoder encoders to predict the noise uh, that need to be removed. So we have the network subsystem on theta that get the state, and uh, we can see in this equation basically that uh, um, at each uh, state x t. Uh, we apply the network epsilon theta and we get uh, some estimation to the clean image x uh, zero hat. Um, okay, so um, uh, they have also another uh, things about the forward process that uh, if it's gradual enough, then it's, it's sufficient for the reverse process to be a Markov chain with Gaussian uh, conditional. Basically said that um, um, uh, the p theta probability uh, function is basically the multiplication of uh, all uh, the marginal probability function of p theta x t minus one given x t, and uh, the marginal probability function p theta of, of x t minus one given x t is uh, just a Gauss is the probabilities from a Gaussian distribution that the mean value is uh, mu theta and uh, the variance is uh, sigma theta. And they also define the reverse process mean and the variance as uh, this term. Uh, mu theta basically is uh, depend on the denoising auto encoder epsilon theta. And sigma theta basically is some hyperparameters that depend on the beta t. 
Um, so they take this uh, this definition of the reverse process and apply it into the variational orbits that we saw earlier. And um, the version the variational orbit basically is is the MC error loss that we see in here. Basically, we have some constant terms, and we have the uh, second norm between epsilon and epsilon theta, which epsilon theta is the denoising order encoder. So uh, let's see the overall uh, training algorithm. We start by sampling some uh, uh, clean image, x0. We sample some state uh, between one to big T. We sample uh, some Gaussian uh, noise, uh, epsilon. And then we use the closed form. We jump from x0 to xt. We get the state xt. And then we take a gradient descent uh, step on uh, this term. Basically, uh, we want to predict with the denoising order encoder epsilon theta what is the noise that added from x0 to xt. And we do this until convergence. And regarding the inference, uh, we use the Langevin dynamics, which is a concept from uh, physics. And uh, basically, we use the stochastic gradient Langevin dynamics. And uh, this is a method that uh, can uh, sample uh, from probability density function p theta using only the gradients. Uh, we don't need the, the, the probability function itself p theta. We just we can just use the um, the gradient of the log probability of this function and get uh, some uh, uh, data sample. So basically, uh, the update function of the reverse process is uh, goes like this. Uh, since we have the state xt, uh, we use the epsilon theta uh, denoising motor encoders and um, add some Gaussian noise, and then we get uh, the estimation of the x10 minus 1 state. Um, Jonathan Hu also showed in the paper that uh, um, if we had a, a white noise of variance uh, a beta t, so it's uh, optimal if, we, if at inference time we initialize the noise with uh, some Gaussian noise. So uh, the overall sampling, sampling algorithm, the inference algorithm, we start from a Gaussian noise, and then um, we, t we, we run from uh, t equal to big T uh, till uh, t equal to 1. At each, at each time, we, we sample some uh, Gaussian noise, and we use the inference of Langevin dynamics algorithm in order to, to get a better estimation for the state until we reach to each until we reach to x zero, which is the clean image. We can see here uh, the result of the original paper for uh, Cypher 10. For example, we can see the unconditional uh, generation. Uh, we can see here the FAD score, lower is better. We can see that uh, the proposed method, the DDPM, get uh, the best result comparing to Stargan 2 and uh, some other methods like FXCC and and transformers. In terms of uh, inception uh, score, which is uh, higher is better, we get, uh, they get a very close result to the Stargan 2. Here we see uh, some generation example for Cypher 10. Uh, each row is a different example, and uh, we can see that they start from a completely noise, and uh, until we get uh, some clean image at the right. Okay, so uh, this was the, the DPM, the original paper. Um, later, uh, OpenAI published the paper Diffusion Model Big Scan. And basically, they found a better diffusion model architecture uh, with uh, some ablation of the, of the architecture. And they also improved the sample quality with some classifier guardians. Uh, for example, we can see here result uh, for uh, the generation from the dataset ImageNet. Uh, with resolution of um, 520. Basically, they get an FAD score, which is very, which get a state of the art result uh, back then of uh, 3.85. Um, this is the, uh, the FAD score uh, comparing to the previous methods. For example, we can see that uh, their method, the ADM, the diffusion bit scan methods, um, um, achieved the, the state of the art result in terms of FAD score comparing to all the previous methods. Another paper that they published by Jonathan Hu uh, was the cascade diffusion models. Uh, basically, the idea was uh, uh, to use uh, three different uh, diffusion models um, and uh, generate uh, super resolution uh, images. For example, we start from uh, some class ID, 
and uh, the first diffusion process uh, uh, start from a completely noisy image and generate uh, this uh, 32 by 32 image. And then we use the uh, two different uh, diffusion models that uh, basically uh, their task was to super resolution to get a higher resolution from uh, the previous uh, uh, image. And this is, for example, a synthetic uh, image from ImageNet uh, from uh, the paper uh, of uh, cascade diffusion models. Um, and this is uh, the FID score and the inception score. We can see, for example, that uh, the cascade diffusion models uh, improve the result uh, uh, of uh, the diffusion bit scan and all of the previous methods that uh, use uh, VQVE and uh, GANs. Um, Another important uh, paper that published uh, this year uh, was the progressive distillation uh, for fast sampling of diffusion models. Um, basically, the, the main drawback of uh, diffusion models was their uh, so slow sampling time. Basically, we need like a 1,000 iteration in order to, to generate image. So uh, in their paper, they present a method uh, to distill uh, the trained diffusion models into new diffusion models that uh, use a very little amount of, uh, of, of inference steps. For example, they distill a 1K iteration of, a, of a inference step into four steps. Basically, their method was, uh, uh, was to take, uh, for example, four steps of uh, diffusion models, and each two steps distill it with uh, just one diffusion uh, model. And then we can take uh, these two diffusion uh, steps and distill it with another diffusion models. We can see here the, the result. For example, if we look on the ImageNet data set, uh, in the Y axis, we, we see the FAD score. And in the X axis, we see the sampling steps. So for example, if we look at uh, the red curve, the blue curve is the DDIM method. And the, the brown uh, curve is uh, their method. We can see, for example, that take, they take a over of 500 iteration and compress it into uh, 16 iteration. Okay, uh, another uh, important paper that published was uh, the global context with uh, this discrete uh, diffusion in vector quantized modeling for image generation. Basically, they propose to use VQVE with diffusion models. Um, the learn and diffusion model of the Latin space of the VQVE. We can see here the wall architecture. Basically, uh, we have some input image. Uh, we encode it with uh, some uh, VQVE model and get the token. And um, then we take this token space and uh, learn the discrete diffusion models um, to generate uh, in, the, in the token space. Basically, at inference time, what they did is start from a uh, completely uh, uniform uh, noise distribution and uh, sample some image on the token space. And after that, they take uh, the generate image in the token space and use the decoder of the VQVE and get a an, uh, generated image. Uh, we can see here, for example, uh, the uh, uh, flow performance, uh, the Y axis is the FID score and the X axis is uh, the number of flops. And for example, uh, their method, the uh, VQDDDM, um, use much less operation than the, the previous method, uh, like uh, the DDIM, uh, and they get uh, the same FAD score. Okay, so uh, this was uh, the first part, of, uh, the first part of the presentation. Uh, anyone has some question? Okay. So I will continue to the second part. And now we'll talk about our uh, published paper, Denoising Diffusion Gamma Models. Uh, this work uh, was, uh, this is a joint work with uh, Robin San Ramon from EMS Paris and uh, Professor Leroy Wolf from, from Tel Aviv University. So all the previous methods uh, uh, of the diffusion models use the Gaussian noise as uh, the noise uh, that generate the image. So in this uh, research, uh, we thought what will happen if we change the noise into another noise. And uh, before we, we, we choose some noise, uh, we take uh, this graph that basically uh, each node is in this graph is the some uh, probability distribution. 
and uh, the edges between the nodes uh, is the math operator that uh, gets us from uh, one probability distribution into another. For example, if we take uh, the normal distribution, if we apply the X function, we get the log normal distribution. So uh, in the normal distribution, we can see here the self loop. Basically, it means that uh, if we sum normal distribution, then we, uh, then again, we get some normal distribution. So uh, we, we need to choose another um, kind of noise that uh, has, this that has this probability of, uh, of uh, the closed loop. Basically, it's very important for the training of the diffusion process. Uh, and we choose the gamma probability distribution. Basically, this probability distribution, we know that if we sum it to gamma, uh, uh, to gamma uh, variables, uh, we get another gamma variable. And uh, we also saw that uh, the gamma distribution uh, is, uh, can lead to another distribution. Um, okay, so uh, another motivation was why to use gamma distribution uh, was uh, we take some, uh, uh, some DDPA models that train with the Gaussian noise, and we plot the histogram of the generation error of this model. You can see it in here. And, uh, and we try to, to fit it with Gaussian noise and we try to fit it with the gamma noise. And as we can see, the fitting with gamma distribution is much better than fitting with the Gaussian noise. And we can also see it in uh, this figure. And the y-axis is the mean fitting error and the x-axis is uh, the number of steps uh, of the generation error. And as we can see, the, the fitting of uh, the gamma distribution is much better than the fitting of the Gaussian distribution. Okay, so now we'll present uh, the, the noise diffusion gamma models. So basically in the Gaussian case, the update function is um, given xt minus one, uh, we multiply it by square root of one minus beta t and add some Gaussian noise in order to get the state xt. And in our, in, in our case, the gamma case, basically uh, we did the same at the beginning and then we add some gamma noise but uh, we also remove the mean value of the gamma noise since we want uh, uh, the added uh, value uh, with uh, zero mean. The gamma distribution has two parameters. The first one is scale, and the second one is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, the first one is uh, shape, and the second one is scale. And uh, these two terms basically uh, uh, are, are hyperparameter of our models. Um, okay, we also know that in the Gaussian case, in the DDPM case, we have uh, the closed form. Basically, we start, uh, we can jump from uh, static zero to XT with uh, just a single steps. And uh, uh, in also in our case, in the gamma case, we have also the close, this closed form. Uh, basically, we can jump from X zero to XT with just one step. And we add uh, um, some uh, gamma, Gamma, gamma noise distribution uh, minus some uh, constant term. Regarding the inference, uh, the inference also is very similar to the Gaussian case, but uh, uh, the difference is the, uh, in the language dynamics, uh, basically is instead of adding uh, the, ga the Gaussian noise epsilon, we add some normalized gamma noise. Regarding the, optim the optimizing of the gamma diffusion models, um, uh, we know that in the, in the Gaussian case, basically we optimize the variation at lower bound, which is basically the curve divergence between uh, the forward process and the reverse process. And in the, in the gamma case, um, we, we prove that basically the, the variation at lower bound is bounded by some constant term multiplied by the first norm of uh, x0 minus x at zero, which is the estimation of x0. Um, so basically the loss function in the, Gauss, in the Gaussian case, uh, as we remember, is the MSC loss between epsilon and epsilon theta. And in the gamma case, this is the L1 norm between epsilon theta and some uh, gamma noise, normalized gamma noise. So the overall training algorithm uh, goes like this. Uh, we start from uh, sampling a data point from the data set, x0. Um, and then we uh, sample uh, some uh, uh, timestamp t between uh, one to big t. We sample some gamma noise. We use the closed form from the gamma noise. 
and then we take a gradient the step step uh, of the L1 norm between the epsilon theta and the, uh, the normalized gamma noise. Uh, the inference algorithm basically we start from a gamma distribution and uh, is very similar to the gamma case, to the Gaussian case, the DDPM case. Uh, we use the update function and we add by length in dynamics uh, some um, gamma distribution noise. In order to evaluate uh, our proposed method, uh, we tested on uh, two domains. The first was, uh, was speech and the second one was images. Regarding the speech, we use a version of WaveGrad. Uh, we evaluate the model uh, with the PSEC and the STOI uh, measurements, and we train it on the LGA dataset. You can see here the result. This is the PSEC and the STOI score, basically higher is better. Uh, this is the WaveGrad result, and this is the DGM model, our model. We can see uh, uh, we get a result per number of uh, iteration at the inference time from six iteration uh, till uh, 1,000 iteration. As you can see, our model get a, a better result than the wave got in all of uh, the number of iterations. Regarding image generation, we turn our model on uh, two image data sets. So the first one is LBA and the second one is Elson Chirty data set. And uh, we measure the FID score. We can see here the result. Um, this is uh, the number of iterations that, that we use in, at the inference time uh, between uh, 10 to 1000. And as we can see, uh, our model uh, uh, with the, the DDIM get a better result than the previous DDIM method in all of, in all of the number of uh, inference uh, iteration that we use. Uh, this is uh, also hold from, uh, for uh, the DDPM case. Our model improved the result uh, between 10 iteration to 100 iteration, but for 100 iteration, we see that the DDPM get a better result than us. Regarding the Elson Church score, uh, um, that I said, we see that uh, our method uh, improved the result be uh, uh, for all number of iteration between 10 to 100. Um, Okay, so a conclusion regarding this method, uh, we present a novel gamma diffusion method that employ a gamma noise distribution. A key enabler uh, for using this uh, distribution is the closed form formulation um, that uh, allows efficient training. We also present a reverse process uh, for the gamma distribution in the variation at lower bound. And uh, we saw that the, the proposed model improves uh, the quality generated image in, in uh, audio and the image domain uh, with comparison to the Gaussian based diffusion process model. Okay, now we'll go to the third part of the presentation uh, noise estimation for generative diffusion models. So, basically, as we said, uh, the main drawback of uh, the diffusion model is the inference time. They, they need a high number of uh, inference iteration in order to get a good result. Um, so, at the training time, uh, the denoising network epsilon theta uh, fed with uh, the current state XT and the ground truth noise level square root alpha bar T. However, at inference time, the amount of denoise in the data XT is unknown. We don't know the noise level at the current state. So, um, so we thought that maybe we need to, to change the, the current inference algorithm and give it some signal about uh, the noise level at its state. So uh, basically, uh, to solve this problem, we introduce the novel neural network speed theta that estimate uh, the current noise alpha bar t. The input to this network is uh, the generated uh, data sample xt, uh, the noisy state, and the output is the estimated noise level alpha hat t. And so this network speed data provide a continuous signal to the generation process. So this is uh, the overall architecture. Uh, basically, um, uh, let's look about the uh, denoising process. For example, uh, we are in this state. Uh, we get uh, the state to the p theta networks. The p theta networks estimate uh, alpha hat, the noise, the current noise level at uh, the state. And then we apply some functions that called UNS, which I will describe later. Uh, this function UNS basically give, give us the hyperparameter 
alpha and beta, the noise scheduling, and we use it in the, in the epsilon theta uh, denoising autoencoders in order to estimate the new state. The idea also uh, was to use a frequent DDTM. And uh, as, I, as I said, the P-theta network calculates uh, the adjustment of the noise schedule. So we empirically found that the performance of these networks uh, is uh, crucial in uh, low noise situation. And so in the last steps of the generation process are responsible for the quality of the final image. And at this stage, the amount of the noise are very small and alpha by T is very, is very close to one. So we designed the regression loss on alpha bar uh, T uh, with this term. Basically, this is the, this, the second norm between um, the log uh, function of one minus uh, the, ground, the ground truth of uh, and minus a uh, log function of one minus uh, alpha bar T, which is the output of uh, our network. Basically, what we did is that uh, since the log function has a uh, asymptota uh, near uh, uh, where the argument is close to zero, then um, the networks, our networks P theta, um, will get a better result when alpha bar T is close to one. So uh, we wish to use alpha uh, hat T, uh, the output of the networks P theta, in order to adjust the noise schedule parameter. We have two uh, different scheduling. The first one is uh, linear scheduling, and the second one is Fibonacci scheduling. And this allows us to define the following function, the UNS function, the update noise schedule function, which take the alpha hat t and the timestamp t, and calculate uh, the alpha and the beta noise parameter for the remaining noise space. So this is uh, the model inference uh, procedure. And we start uh, uh, from a, a completely noisy image, X uh, big T, which is a Gaussian noise. And then we use the initial noise scheduling. Uh, we initialize the alpha and the beta uh, noise parameters. And then we start from a T equal to big T uh, till uh, T equal to one. At each step, uh, we sample uh, some Z noise, which is uh, the Langin dynamics noise. And we use uh, the update function of the diffusion models. And then if we had uh, some uh, timestamps that we want to, to update uh, our noise scheduling, we use the P-theta network that uh, get the current state X T minus one, calculate uh, the SNR value, the alpha bar T value. And then we apply the update noise scheduling function and get the, 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 the alpha and the beta noise scheduling parameter, and we use it in uh, the later uh, diffusion uh, uh, inference steps. Okay, so um, regarding the experiment, uh, we also test it on speech and image synthesis. Uh, regarding speech, uh, we use the uh, web trend implementation. We train a small uh, model fitted uh, uh, networks based on a version of con conf Tasnet architecture. So basically, conf Tasnet architecture, this is a, a, a network that uh, um, separated uh, uh, voices. And uh, the, the conf Tasnet networks uh, basically cut uh, using a separated networks the signal into chunk and process uh, each uh, chunk individually. So our networks uh, further, uh, after the conf Tasnet uh, uh, networks uh, applies some uh, fully connected layer with the uh, output dimensionality of one, followed by sigmoid activation function um, to each chunk. And the final output alpha bar t is basically the average of the all previous uh, of output chunks. You can see here the, the result of uh, the MSC of uh, the trained uh, network speed theta. The y axis is the MSC and the x axis is uh, the Alpha, alpha bar T. You can see that the, um, the error is very, is very low. It's between 10 to minus four to 10 to minus eight. And you can see uh, as we approach to one with uh, alpha bar T, the MSC error is very, is very low. Here we can see the quality of result, uh, the MCD score, the P second is toy score. We compare uh, our method to 1000 iteration, 
and to grid search it, uh, method. Basically, this is a method that uh, do grid search over the all uh, alpha and beta hyperparameters of the diffusion process. And our method uses uh, just uh, six iteration of uh, uh, inference uh, uh, steps. We can see that in terms of p second story score, we get a better result than uh, the grid search and the uh, uh, one thousand iteration. And in terms of MCD score, <laughs> we get a worse result. Regarding the image generation, uh, we train our model pitted on three image uh, data set, the Cele Bay data set, the Elson bedroom data set, and the Elson church data set. Regarding the network speed data, um, we use the VGG uh, backbone, uh, pre-trained on ImageNet. We had some relu activation followed by a fully connected layer with the output dimensionality of one. And finally, sigmoid activation function to uh, this backbone. Here we can see the result of the, and the, and the y axis. This is the FID score, and the x axis is the number of iteration. Um, this is a, a, in the red curve we see our method, and in the blue curve we see the DDTM method. This is for Celebe, and as we can see, our uh, method get a, a improved result compared to the DDIM method. Uh, this is for example, this is three example uh, when we compare our method uh, to the DDI method for a uh, six iteration of uh, the diffusion process. We start from the same noise. The, f the, the first line is uh, the first row is our model and the second row is the DDI model. And as we can see, our, our model get a, a better uh, image than the DDI model in six iteration. This is a comparison of uh, the DDPM model comparing uh, to our model in Celebe dataset. Again, in the Y axis, we get the FID score. In the X axis, we have uh, the number of iteration. And as we can see, our model we, in the red curve get a better result than the, uh, the DDPM. Here we can see the FID score of the Elson Church dataset and Elson Bedroom dataset. dataset. Um, we can see in the red curve uh, the R method, in the blue curve the DDI method, and, and we can see that the T9 iteration, our, our method get a better result than the DDI. And this is example uh, of a uh, six iteration uh, when we compare our method to the DDI method in the Elson bedroom uh, dataset and Elson church dataset. In the first row, this is our method. In the second row, this is the DDI method. And as we can see, uh, our, our image at the output is more coherent and sharp than the DDIM image. This is another example uh, of um, Elson uh, uh, bathroom and Elson church data set. Uh, for example, here we can see the, uh, what happens if we start from the same noise. Um, here, this is uh, our, our result comparing to the DDIM method. Um, okay, so uh, conclusion. So we, um, diffusion models with a lim limited number of steps require to carefully choose the schedule of the synthesis process. So previous method perform a grid search in order to find the optimal global noise parameters per each number of steps. Uh, this fixed selection do not adjust uh, according to the specific example that being generated. And our method adjusts on the fly the noise parameter and thus alter the subsequent uh, state of the process. And based on estimating during the inference, the core noise level uh, is estimated and get a, a sharper result. And our method is also generic and independent given the current uh, sample from the, the condition parameters. It also remains for uh, future work to check uh, whether the same PTT networks can uh, be used across multiple data sets. Okay, um, questions? Hey, uh, thank you for, for a great talk. Uh, so if I understand correctly, you say that what you observe is that gamma distribution works better in general than, than the normal distribution. And and it comes uh, between modalities. So it's the same for images and for, for speed synthesis. Uh, it was the same phenomenon. So if, if that's correct, if I did not miss anything uh, from the talk, then my question would be, uh, what is your intuition? Why did gamma distribution is better, uh, especially across modalities? Is there something um, 
is, is there like the underlying phenomena that is possible for that, like a physical generating process, or, or that's something else? So I have uh, two two intuition why the gamma distribution I think works better than the the, the Gaussian noise. The first one is that uh, if we look on the generation error, uh, the gamma distribution better fit the generation error than uh, the Gaussian noise. We can see it here in this experiment. Yes. That we did. Um, and the other is intuition is that um, the gamma distribution uh, can lead uh, to a much broader number of distributions than the Gaussian. Um, so maybe it has more uh, freedom to, um, uh, to generate uh, um, data than the Gaussian case. So this is the second intuition. So then the, your second intuition would be that uh, if, if you take this gamma as, as a prior, it, it can be a good prior for more types of distributions than, than normal. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. That's very interesting. Thank you. Okay, another question? about uh, using it also for uh, take, taking up the resolution for the hyper resolution. How can you use a diffusion model as well? Um, sorry, I didn't hear you well. Can you please repeat the question? Yes, I asked about um, the application also for enhancing the resolution of images uh, that you talked about briefly. And if you can expand more on how the diffusion can be used uh, to also uh, increase, yes, exactly in this. Okay, so basically, um, I, the original diffusion process starts from a completely noise, and uh, from this completely noise, generates some image. Basically, we can expand uh, the diffusion architecture and start from uh, some image, um, some clean image, and uh, enhance it into to some. Uh, a higher resolution image. We can do it in uh, two ways. The first one is basically use this uh, lower resolution image as a conditioning to the diffusion process. This is the first idea. And the second idea is to use it as uh, uh, the initial noise. Basically, we can take this uh, low resolution image, uh, and do some upsample, and take it as uh, the, the first uh, noise at the inference algorithm. And then you also use it iteratively uh, to create a larger and larger image. So you use different models each time. In what are they different? So basically, at the, this example from the CDM paper, they use three model. Um, each one of the models um, um, get a higher resolution image, and they are completely different from each other. They don't did any weight sharing or something like this. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, another question. Um, are diffusion models also suitable, or could they be used for a conditional generation in, in a sense like? For instance, we, you know, we just provide them with some say, characteristics of the image, and maybe a top form that we encode. I'm sorry. Can you please repeat the question? I don't understand you. Yes, uh, sure. Sorry. So my question is: If we could use uh, different models for conditional generation from text to image uh, by providing some textual description and and getting an image that is uh, congruent with this textual description. Yes, we can use uh, diffusion models uh, to generate uh, image from text. Uh, there was a paper that published by OpenAI teams that called Glide that basically achieves state-of-the-art results from uh, uh, text to image. And uh, basically the conditioning is uh, some uh, uh, text embedding and the output is the image and they get a very good result. They compare it to clip uh, method and they get an improved result. 
Mm-hmm. Great. What, what's the name of the paper again? Glide. Ah, Glide. Yeah, of course. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, okay, another question. Okay, thank you.